Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about the Unigine game engine. And if you're a regular this channel, you no doubt have waited a while for a Unigine update. And if you're not a regular this channel and you're into the world of game development, do hit subscribe. You'll stay up to date with the latest and greatest in news such as a Unigine game engine release. And that's what we're talking about today. Unigine 2.15 was just released and it has been since April since the last release. That was Unigine 2.14 back in April, as I mentioned. Um, and I gotta admit, in all things told, you know, we're not living in regular times right now so I'm not going to harp on any game engine company about being slow for releases except you Crytek. CryEngine I don't know what's going on with you buddy but uh, anyways Unigine 2.14 the reason why we actually care about Unigine in general is because Unigine 2.11 and that is when they launched the community version. This is when I started aiming more at indie game development. It is free to use up to $100,000 in annual income so that was definitely a nice move. They also changed their licensing structure and so on but the reason why I mention all this is because in the release of Unigine 2.15, well, a lot of the new stuff isn't going to be available in the Community Edition, which I will acknowledge kind of sucks. So first, let's do a quick hands-on with Unigine, and then we'll come back to the release notes of what is new. So here you can see Unigine in action. Unigine is uh, really, really good uh, at one thing in particular, and that is it makes beautiful terrain and landscapes. It also has 64-bit precision, so you can make gigantic worlds. But as you can see, here is one of the water examples. And let's say I want to spice things up with a sky. Let's go ahead and we'll create one. So new, sky. Here is our sky object in the world. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and place it. And there you see you have a sky. Fully animated, uh, fully working, fully configurable, all of your settings over here. Uh, so this is kind of Unigine's game engine. Behind the scenes, you can program it using uh, their own Unigine script, C++, or the C-sharp programming language. It's a semi-modular game engine in focus. It's not full ECS like you've seen with a lot of engines, but it does um, have that kind of approach to things. So here you can see how objects, they have a number of uh, properties predefined for them. You can add in new properties, etc. But it is not the traditional composition-based approach that you've seen. I still intend to do a tutorial series at some point in time. Now, one of the major new features, and this is available to everybody, not just um, the, the paid versions here, is they have a new uh, material system here. And I'm going to open up Material Graph, and you can see it in action. So you can create new materials, by the way. Just go ahead, create Material, Material Graph, like so. And it is a new visual uh, interface for creating uh, materials. I believe it's Control and Middle Mouse, but yeah. Uh, so as you can see, a traditional um, visual interface towards creating uh uh, 3D objects, 3D textures. You see here, you can right click to bring in the various different properties. So it is a visual uh, shader editor. Um, not sure if you can actually get a preview, which strikes me as a little bit odd. Uh, but this is definitely one of the marquee new features in Unigine 2.15 that is at least available to everybody. Um, so that is Unigine. The, there are a number of samples available. You just basically go to the launcher. You're gonna find, uh, you can grab the 2.15 version available here. Uh, but there are a ton of samples that walk you through everything. So we got some number of demos available here that like a third person shooter, a bunch of VR and AR ones. Um, and then you've got some language specific ones. So if you wanna do C Sharp specific examples, you've got those available as well. There are a number of add-ons available too. Uh, another area that improved in the 2.15 is we've got some additions to the vegetation add-on. So this gives you the ability to quickly create lifelike trees in Unigine as an example. Got some VFX stuff, some starter content, uh, 3D scanned objects and so on available in the add-on section. Uh, but yeah, so this here is Unigine. Uh, come back in here, your samples, uh, Okay, why didn't you grab my license? Okay, all right, well done with the hands-on portion. Uh, I don't think my license is, is configured right right now. So uh, you know what, I'll just move on. Okay, so here we are, going back to said release notes about Unigine 2.15. Uh, again, the marquee new feature is the visual material graph editor. Um, so you can basically create um, network nodes of um, properties to create your own uh, materials. Um, and you get a visual representation. The weird thing is, again, there is no preview of the final material in this that I can see, which strikes me as a little bit strange, but uh, key features include uh, loops, uh, allows you to repeat an arbitrary sequence of actions multiple times, uh, portals, keep visual clarity even for complex or large graphs, avoiding situation where connection wires are all over the place, connectors, expression nodes, and you can do subgraphs, so you can do reusable components that you use in multiple different materials. 
Um, 200 plus pre-configured nodes, to, or you can create your own, switch between material types, assign them to objects directly, or use as parent materials and avoid reassembling the whole graph, concrete subgraphs with ease, so on and so forth. And on top of that, the water system, which you saw in action in the preview I just showed, got improved as well. And this is where, again, Unigine really shines in, in like the water, the terrain, the... Um, the sky and atmosphere stuff, the clouds, it's got some of the best out of the box looking environments that you have ever seen. Um, and we'll get back to that for the train in just a second. But uh, we've got uh, improvements to the water system, realistic water, real time water simulation, precise control over each individual wave uh, for complex hydrodynamic simulations, waves and physical object interaction, smooth sea state changes, seamless water and patterns at any, distance, at any distances, and two out of the box options for automated and manual wave control. What I do find, again, amazing is how well the automated stuff works. It kind of boils down to drop water in your world, drop sky into your world, drop clouds into your world, drop sun into your world and you have a really beautiful looking default. You don't need to really even know what you're doing. Now, if you are using their terrain system, uh, there is better compression for the terrain, a uh, thousand to one, they said. So uh, imported landscape maps are now compressible due to the compression tool allows you to significantly reduce files, a uh, thousand, uh, sorry, a hundred to one. I guess a thousand to one is some pretty solid compression. A hundred to one is still nothing to sneeze at. Uh, compression tool presents two texture compressions, uh, lossy and lossless, as well as a custom option. Compressed map files are not modifiable at runtime though. One of those things to be aware of. Um, and you're going to want to use lossless if you don't want any quality uh, deterioration. Obviously, loss, um, lossy collection com compression is going to give you better compression. But really, how big are your terrain maps that you're going to need to compress them that much? We also have improvements to the sandworm tool. The sandworm tool is added in, I think, the last release, maybe the one before it. Basically, allows you to import real-world um, GIS data uh, and create levels from it. So we got a number of improvements here. I do believe this is a sim only feature, which again is kind of unfortunate. Uh, mixed reality got better. They got support for the Varjo XR3, which I have to honestly admit I have never actually heard of, but I guess it's more high end, usually used in flight simulators. Uh, then we got editor plugins. Uh, developing any simulation and training software games too comes with the inconvenience of tool creation, uh, scenario builders, scene editors, content placement tools, etc., and consumes quite a portion of time. In our effort to make your development process as fast and convenient as possible, we encourage you to make your own domain specific tools for user generated content based on the Unigine editor functionality. Creating editor plugins have become easier in 2.15 with SDK browser integration. Uh, added two uh, project templates, so engine GUI window and materials can be used as a basis. Some of our ongoing projects already implement editor extensions using the plugin system and current editor API. So if you want to add your own and create your own tools uh, directly inside of Unigine, the process has gotten better. Uh, we've had some improvements to the Unigine editor in general, new cluster brush editor, improved cluster brushes, asset browser improvements, and advanced import of materials from FBX assets. Once the FBX is imported, automatically assigned with the proper texture presets, which is always nice because the importing process is almost always a pain point. This one I found really exciting, uh, a improved weather system and so on in the IG. Unfortunately, IG is again sim only. So you do not get this. The IG plugin is not available in the community version, uh, but it gives you better um, basically high level weather systems. So on top of all those clouds and such, you can actually have rainstorms, lightning and so on in the sim version. And then we have a new demo available, the Mars demo in the sim edition. So this is kind of unfortunate. So you guys a Mars, Ro Mars Rover example that's available out there only for the people using the sim version. And then we've got the crane rope sample for everybody, which is kind of nice here. So uh, rewritten to use rope body, a set of optimizations to stabilize rope behavior. So if you're working with physics, that's another option. And then the vegetation add-on improved. Um, so a small set of small plants and pines to make total count of vegetation of 40 types. Uh, each of them having two to 20 variations. And then we've got some other updates. Uh, Realistic BDRF created their own BRF to make sure that light distributes and reflects as naturally as possible. So there is the new versus the old. It's minor, but you can definitely see uh, the results, especially if you look at that part of the moon right there. And then they are working on uh, round Earth Geo plugin, a new in-app GUI, which is nice, off-screen rendering, and then DirectX 12 Vulkan and console support. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Unigine 2.15. Now, I mentioned a number of times here, they've got different versions here. There's a sim and engineering SDK in addition to the community. Community is the version that is, well, it's free. Uh, and you can make up to $100,000 a year, but as you saw, Ironically, they're showing the Mars rover here, but that demo is not actually available. Uh, so you're getting into the other versions 
No, I thought they had the list of pricing here. Hmm. All right, so we'll go to, I think it's SIM actually, that's the next step up. Um, so this is the paid version here. Um, and let me just pause for a second. I'm gonna try and get the pricing up. But you see here, definitely uh, there is different functionality available between the versions. All right, here we go. So you're looking at the SDK for the engineering version is $6,000 per seat per year. So obviously you start getting into some uh, higher pricing and then when you want the um, turnkey stuff, you're looking at call them for the pricing, which you know what that generally means. So that is uh, the, the downside there. Unfortunately, they're gating some of their new functionality, but most of it is aimed at technical or simulation style users. Uh, unfortunately, the dynamic weather systems and so on, uh, well, that all works off something called IG, and that is unfortunately not available. Uh, and that that's definitely the, the piece that they missed, the IG. Um, this part, it, it's a powerful portion that I wish was in all versions. Unfortunately, it is not. So that new dynamic weather system is not part of this release. But anyways, Unigine 2.15, uh, first release in about nine months. Uh, the big new things obviously are the, the, the material editor that they've added in, uh, the um, new BDRF renderer, the vegetation add-ons, um, water sim improvements, editor plugin support, sandworm tool got better, compression of terrain. Uh, so some decent stuff in there for sure. Let me know what you think uh, of Unigine. Now they're playing catch up. So I think they need to, you know, almost over deliver because they need to steal market share from Unreal and Unity and good luck doing that. But I'm curious, what do you think of Unigine in general and the 2.15 release today? Let me know, comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.